All right, welcome, guys. I'm Dominic Izzo. I'm a retired police officer from the state of Illinois up in the northwest suburbs of Chicago area. Welcome to my channel, depending on whatever format you're watching. This is uh, Officer Dominic Izzo channel, uh, brought to you by Spreely TV, Spreely.com, all things speak freely. Go ahead and check them out for social media platforms, news, articles, uh, fantastic content shows. We run a show there five days a week called The Rants of Izzo, where we cover everything from politics to porn. But in this, I'm going to be breaking down law enforcement um, law enforcement topics, if you will. Running a live stream right now. This is going to be new on this. I want to see how you guys are interacting with us as well, too. I started a YouTube channel a while ago because I wanted to start to put up a, a, my passion for law enforcement. And um, bottom line, I think law enforcement is in a real shitty direction. It's just, as we saw... Over the last several years, especially with the uh, um, lockdown, if you will, we saw some cops, um, <laughs> too many as far as I'm concerned. We saw some damn cops who were willing to enforce stupid mandates, in my opinion, unconstitutional mandates, where I've said this a million times. If all police did was stand in solidarity with the Constitution during the last couple of years and said, yeah... Yeah, it's not my job to wind up uh, removing a guy from a, your, your teacher's conference because you don't like the fact he's not wearing a mask. No, you want him kicked out of your grocery store because she's not wearing a mask? It's not happening. If cops had did that, we would have not have seen what happened over that three-year period of time happen. It was absolutely, utterly abhorrent, especially cops who were arresting people like gym owners, bar patrons. It was just a complete effing uh, embarrassment by law enforcement. But as time goes on, you really don't see too much improvement. The amount of, of constant, uh, just real garbage use of force videos that are still out there shows we have a problem with law enforcement. I'm a defensive tactics expert, martial arts expert, um, still martial arts teacher, wrestling coach. Uh, I, was, I was the department uh, use of force instructor, uh, defensive tactics instructor for my department. I love combatives, and we still see a bunch of cops who just try and keep it clean they can't f and fight and you see an escalation in use of force i'm very opinionated if you've ever watched my stuff too i don't think women should be cops and in today's day and age too where 90 percent of you who are cops you want to pretend you're the police you go on your social media you pose as a bikini competitor look at me and my thin blue line crap and you just you don't know what the job is women i said it a million times if you could take me into custody by yourself I'll have respect for you, but I think that the job has gone by the wayside with a bunch of guys who are fat, they're overweight, they're out of shape, they can't do the job, and they're just as bad too. So if you haven't got the 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 gist by now, I'm extremely opinionated when it comes down to uh, law enforcement, and I have a very big uh ideology behind it i think that we cops are they're some of the greatest human beings on the planet that were called to, to the profession to do the job so damn righteously i wish they would i wish they would honor their oath i wish they would sit there and be more educated we have far too many first amendment video auditors out there who are embarrassing police officers and that and rightfully so you're ex being exposed by not knowing what your job is and is not within the the, the uh, constitution um I want to bring my passion and my expertise in law enforcement to the content of reviewing use of force issues, all that stuff. I do have a book. It's called Before the Badge, Everything You Need to Know Before You Become a Cop, forwarded by Sheriff Jar Arpaio. Uh, it's available at wordsmatterpublishing.com, uh, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon.com. That's Before the Badge, Everything You Need to Know Before You Become a Cop. You could sponsor and support my work with that. It's, it's, it's an ideology. It is based on what I believe law enforcement should be. And don't get me wrong. That was based on my time as a cop where I said and looked at the stuff I did and went, holy fuck, dude. Really? This is your mouth? This is how you treat people? And towards the end of my career where I looked, I said, man, I'm a company man. I'm very uh, hell-bent on holding myself accountable, other cops accountable. If you know my story, if you don't, hey, go ahead and buy the book. You'll read exactly what happened with me and my, uh, my uh, department. Um... I want to take a look at this, and uh, somebody asked me to review this the other day as I separate this for a second. I do. I'm going to be trying to monitor, if I can, some of your comments and um, how this is going. Stand by for a second. We are working this in progress. Do we have? We do. All right. I want to see if I can keep an eye on your comments as well. Stand um, by for a second. 
So if I can uh, answer anything you guys got going on, right? Yes. Uh, Sailor Outlaw George Rock. Hello, officer. Hey, see, we got comments going. I appreciate that. So somebody asked me the other day uh, to review the uh, Okaloosa County deputy who shot an airman who opened his apartment door uh, holding a gun. And I have not seen the footage. I saw stills of the footage. We'll take a look at it. I'll have my first review with you, give you what I think, and uh, we'll just take this uh, as a very easy going matter of fact conversation on law enforcement. Hope you have value with this. If you see this and you're watching this live, you want to get questions, ask questions. If I got answers for you, I got answers for you. If I don't, I'll have them for the next time. If you're watching this on a, on a, a pre replay in the comment section, tell me what you thought. Write down if you agree with me, disagree with me, uh, state what your views are, and uh, we'll have a civil I'll do my best to have a civil conversation. I will. Can't guarantee it. There's a lot of fucktards out there don't know how to have civil conversations. So I'll just match your energy if we have that. But let's watch this together. This is the, the uh, Okaloosa County deputy shoots airman who opened his apartment door uh, holding a gun. Let's take a look at this and go. Not sure why the audio is blipped out. What's going on? One. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I just was told to let her know if you guys come by. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give her a quick call and let you guys know. Okay. Let her know so there was a fight going on or something? Uh, that's. I was not present for that. Okay. Yes, sir. Are they fighting or something? She's saying that it happens frequently. Okay. But this time it sounded like it was getting out of hand. Okay, which door? I don't know. I'm not sure. Two weeks ago I was walking by like by their apartment basically mm -hmm. on this side. And I was hearing someone yell like shoot the like some stupid B word and all this other mm -hmm. stuff and I heard a slap. Like okay. right after it, but I wasn't sure where it came from, okay. and I couldn't call. Like I didn't want to call the police. Like, you know. Which room is it? Fourteen oh one. Fourteen oh one. Okay. Fourteen oh one. But the girl sounded scared. The one that called, she said she was like, "It's getting out of. It sounds like it's getting really okay. out of hand." So it's hit number four, huh? Yeah. Okay. You mean fair? We stand out there and direct the deputy that's coming to this okay. area. It's not. You're, you're going to go up to the fourth floor, uh -huh. and it's going to be on this side. Right? Gotcha.
Let's open the door. Sheriff's office, open the door. Step out. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! It's over there. Drop the gun! I don't have it. 312, shots fired. Suspect down. Do not move! 312, get EMS my location. All right, let's uh, talk about this, break this down. Uh, appreciate uh, uh, who we have to thank for this. This is uh, Police Activity YouTube channel for this one. Um, I'm going to read this narrative really quickly on what this says. It says, uh, on May 3rd, 2024, around 428 p.m., a deputy with the uh, Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office responded to a call of disturbance in progress in Fort Walton Beach. Body camera footage shows the deputy arriving at uh, Fort Walton Beach apartment and speaking to a woman outside who described hearing an argument. Uh, the deputy went to an up into an elevator, fourth floor, and knocks on the door three times, announces himself, saying, uh, Sheriff's, open, Sheriff's office opened the door. 23-year-old senior airman Roger Fortson opened the door and could be seen holding a gun pointed down on the floor. Within seconds... Of the apartment doors opening, the deputy says, step back, and then is seen firing his weapon. Fortson immediately falls to the floor, and the de- as the deputy fires, at least five shots are heard. Uh, after the five shots, Fortson on the ground, the deputy yells uh, to Fortson, drop the gun, and Fortson re- replies, it's over there, I don't have it. The video ends with the deputy reporting that the shots have been fired, uh, requesting emergency medical services come to the scene. Fortson was taken to the hospital where he uh, de- uh, died. Attorney Ben Crump, who has been hired uh, by Fortson's family, said Fortson was talking to his girlfriend on FaceTime when the deputy arrived. Crump said Fortson uh, grabbed the gun because he heard somebody outside the apartment, got no response when he asked who was there, and discovered uh, the peephole on his door was blocked. Uh, Okaloosa County Sheriff um, Aiden presented the, the redacted video hours of the family. Aiden, excuse me. He presented the, the, the redacted video hours of the fam, after the family for Fortson and their attorney uh, had a news press conference which disputed that the deputy acted in self-defense. Uh, Aiden rejected the, the assertions made by Crump and the deputy had gone to the wrong apartment, discovered the doors, peephole, did not announce himself. Um, tactically, let's go through this again. Uh, this is tragic. We're going to take a look at this. And uh, I mean, I'm just going to give you the play-by-play. Based on... Based on the call that was given, disturbance in progress. I mean, that's that's subjective. You have to remember um, the people that the cops deal with, not the ones who are being called on, but the nosy Nellies and the Karens who pick up the phone and dial nine one one. I can't tell you. No, I can tell you. I will tell you about the time asshole John Doe across. Washington uh, uh, Boulevard was sitting on his lawn chair and he called in of a massive fight in progress of a bunch of black kids and he believed that they were invading a home. They were invading a home. Four of us went up there, uh, police canine, long guns, all this shit. Yeah, about 10, uh, 10 little black kids between the ages of 13 and maybe six all playing really awesome out front. And it was their house. One, it was two, it was the two brothers that were there and the rest of the kids were all over there playing water guns and having a fun afternoon. And I went over to John Doe and I said, the fuck did you call for? Well, look kind of suspicious. They live there. You know, they live there. And I said, you just don't like, cause they're a bunch of black kids playing outside. Do you? He didn't have an answer to that. The amount of shithead people who uh, love to waste taxpayer police time by getting their noses involved in fucking all business. It's a lot out there. So again, I don't know what this cop was responding to. I also do not know 
the protocol for what their department is responding to a disturbance. I don't have the information. Is this an address they've been to before? They know that, hey, John Doe lives at this address. We we were just there with his girlfriend last night. I got it. I'm 10-2. I'll handle the call. It does not seem like it was a high-priority call or there was a sense of urgency or exigent circumstances, right? So a disturbance is many things. Howdy, sir. All right, so this is a sir. Was that was whoever said that? This this is I don't know if this is male or female. Remember, we have the audio that's cut out for a little bit because you didn't want to hear it. Who would you say? What's going on? One. I I'm not sure. Uh, I just was told to let her know if you guys come by. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give her a quick call and let you guys know. Okay. Let her know. All right. So now we got third party. It's not even the original caller. It's an in between, and it's not that high. Of oh my God, there's somebody bleeding out in the hallway upstairs. So you don't need to. I would wave off my partner. If there's nobody freaking out, I would say, you know, I'm 10 to take a slowdown, whatever. No, regardless of the outcome of what this call is, and I'm, I'm armchair quarterbacking it, I still do not believe this was a two man call necessary. Some, uh, I don't know the size of this sheriff's department. Sometimes can't get another cop there for three, 10, 30 minutes. I don't know what it is. So in this circumstance, I'm not getting the sense that this is something that they have to respond to right away. So there was a fight going on or something? Uh, that's I was not present for that. Doesn't know. He has no information. Okay. Yes, sir. It's not like, oh my God, hurry up, go this way. You know, they're, they're killing each other. We're not getting into that, right? We saw this. He went through the hallway. I don't know because of the audio cut out. I do not know what door or apartment number he was sent to. Don't have that information. Apparently, from what I read, the uh, the uh, attorney for the family asserts he went to the wrong unit. We don't have any information on this. It's very limited. He is very he is lawfully, absolutely allowed within the scope of his job to go see what the hell is going on. We saw him in the elevator. Are, are they fighting or something? She's saying that it happens frequently. Okay. But this time it sounded like it was getting out of hand. Okay, which door? I'm not sure. Two weeks ago, I was walking by, like, by their apartment, basically, mm-hmm. on this side, and I was hearing someone yell, like, shoot the like, you stupid B-word and all this other mm-hmm. stuff, and I heard a slap, like, okay. right after it, but I wasn't sure where it came from, okay. and I couldn't call, like, I didn't want to call the police as much. Like, well, why didn't you want to call the police then? So, number one, again, I'm looking at it. Well, what did Karen get involved for this time? Maybe Karen was just hired of the colored folk across her hall making noise of all hours of the day. So she's tired of the shit. Could have been that too. She doesn't sound like this is an exigent circuit. Oh my God, he's in there beating the shit out of her. You need to get up there now. Doesn't sound like that at all. Again, from my professional and past experience, sounds like somebody who's sick of their fucking neighbors. That's it. We'll continue. Which room is it? 1401. 1401, okay. 1401. But the girl sounded scared, the one that called. She said she was like, it's getting out of, it sounds like it's getting really out of hand. So it's hit number four, huh? Yeah. Okay. You mean fair? We sent out there and directed the deputy that's coming to this area? It's not, you're going to go to the fourth floor and it's going to be on this side. Gotcha. All right. We know he goes the elevator, elevator ride, calling for backup. Backup didn't sound like it responded just yet. A couple of different things. It's like, at this point, if, at this point, if there was another backup on the way and he she was going to direct him up, I'd wait. Or I'd listen. I'd stand outside the door. The only thing right now I disagree with is if he makes it up to the door and he's here... I'm not announcing my presence. I'm waiting. Uh, unless I hear screaming, glass breaking, a tussle, if you will, I'm not going to n- announce my presence because my backup's not there yet. Based on what uh, nosy Car- caller Karen said, I'm going to keep it just very uh, just ob- observing, right? Because I also, you have to look at it this way too. If cops are liable and this guy, I don't know what's going to happen to this officer, but did he base his actions off of the information that was told to him by a third-party witness? So he he was not there. A complainant told him what was going on. 
You want to believe all the complainants that you hear? It's like I told you, there's so, many, there's so many times where they make so much shit up just to sound like it's really important. And it is important to them, but it's not important enough for the cops to do the job the way that they need to. So I would have waited. I would have found out what the ETA of my backup is, and I would have stood by and just hung on and said, all right, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna be listening. And you just listen, man. Put your ear against the door. Do super secret squirrel stuff. I don't care. Whatever. Now... At this point, too, it's, it would be a domestic. No, there's no, I like to keep my hands free. My hands are always, I had, uh, specifically, I had uh, my baton um, uh, on a cross draw or a, on my, on my um, left hip. And I would set my hand on it. It was either my baton or my taser. And then I would have my hand, you know, here, because I always wanted my hands free right away to go to whatever. I would not, if I can't see through a door, I don't hear gunshots. I don't hear fighting. No glass breaking, no barroom brawl table being thrown across the uh, floor. There is no reason for me to pull a pistol, a taser, a baton, OC. There's nothing out because I don't know what's going on. I need to have my hands ready. Maybe I need to have my hands go on. Hands need to go to the radio. Hands need to grab something. I don't know. So I do not be- does not believe uh, that the cop had his pistol drawn at this point. There's no reason to. No reason. Didn't hear anything. And it's only a argument. No one so far has said, there's bloody murder. Oh my God, get up there, hurry up quick. They're killing each other. You didn't hear that. The sense of urgency is nothing. Go down. Yeah. All right, cool. The officer, here's what it is. So let's, uh, let's continue. Yeah, he's hesitating for a second. Listening. Just listening. I just wouldn't have knocked on the door unless my backup was there. The door opens inward, and I would stand on the opposite side because the person who has to open the door has to actually swing out this way to see, you know, that, that 180 view that's in front of them. So I wouldn't stand right away there, too, because I don't know if that person's right there or open up. and, and pull. So tactically, I'm always in yellow. I'm waiting. I'm thinking. You know, you can't do everything perfectly, but, and again, I don't know what the backup time is. He didn't hear anything. You're getting paid by the hour. Wait. Nobody's dying. No bloody murder. This is one of those things, unlike Uvalde, you don't wait. You don't know what's going on just yet. Just wait. Let's keep going. He's on this side of the door. I don't like that. Now he moves. again too i don't know what the sheriff's office over the door it, i like diffusing shit hey police department do me a favor your asshole neighbor call could you open the door really quickly if i have exigent circumstances i could still kick that door in right but play the long game get the shit bags to think you're on their side when it comes down to your what we call verbal judo and whatnot talk to them like a human being you knock on my door like that man i don't know and i can't see it i don't know what the fuck it is yes I'm grabbing a pistol too. I don't know who's playing a game out on me. Sheriff's office, open the door. Step out. Okay, we can't see what happens there. Doors open, and I believe that the officer can see he's holding a, a long gun. I believe it's a long gun, or no, actually, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, uh, assume because I don't think I saw it. No, it's a pistol. Okay, he's got a pistol. It's pointed down. So let's talk about this for a second. Does the officer have the right to shoot? Yes. Lawfully, yes. Does the officer have to wait until the barrel of the pistol is r- risen up before it gets aligned with him, before the officer fires? No, he doesn't. The officer had a lawful reason to be there. Does the homeowner 
have a lawful reason to to open his door, be in his in his home with a gun. According to the Second Amendment, he does. I don't know what Florida's laws are like or Florida, the city's laws, wherever this was. If they're like Chicago, where you can't have a handgun, that bullshit. Your Second Amendment is not your, it's not your permit to carry a gun. It's your God-given right to carry a gun. Arm yourself as far as I'm fucking concerned. They're both in the right. This is a very shitty, shitty circumstance. You have somebody and the, the, the guy, I'm torn because he kind of did the, the right thing too. If you hear sheriff's department, I don't want to be at the door, you know, in, in the hunt and the ready. Because that looks like I'm ready to engage right away. But then again, too, I don't know who's on the other side because I can't see. If I peep out the peephole and I see the boys in blue or brown or green or whatever they're wearing, oh, shit. Yep, just me. So let you know, I do have weapons in the house. I'm opening the door unarmed. What? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Fucking whatever. Or you just don't open the door and you call 911. Hey, I got a cop at my door. Would you tell them that I'm not coming out unless they have a warrant? Whatever the circumstance is. Sadly, this is a shit, shit circumstance. The cop 100% had every lawful authority to put rounds into the target until the threat was eliminated. Yes, when the uh, gentleman opened the door and he had a pistol in his hands, he 100% was a threat, even though constitutionally he was 100% within his right. So now we have a conundrum. Now we have a real serious fucking problem that they need to start studying. They need to start looking at this. What's what? Constitution or state law? Well, clearly the Constitution is the law of the land. But if, a, if we as citizens, because I'm not a cop anymore. If we as citizens can't be armed in our own home, no idea what that cop is doing. And again, I, I told you, I rethink shit so much differently. If that cop kicked in that door, and, the, and, and that guy just emptied rounds into him. Did that cop, uh, where, how, at what point do we start looking at the seizures of authority that police have when it comes down to dealing with citizens? Because again, the cop was right. So it's, I, uh, anyway, I'll finish this up. This is, this is frustrating. It's heartbreaking. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! He's over there. Drop the gun! I don't have it. 312, shots fired. Suspect down. Do not move. 312, get EMS my location. Sadly, that is what is called a, uh, it's a lawful shoot. It's a good shoot. Um, it's not good as in, oh, yeah, it was really good as it happened. It's, uh, it's shitty. It sucks. Um, very sad that it had to happen. And, uh, but lawfully, you know, the police officer was 100% in his lawful authority to do so. And um, the, the resident this, the, had 100% had the lawful authority to be armed at the same time. I want to look at some of your questions over on, um, what do you call it? Uh, what do we call this? We call it on, you, on YouTube. I got a stream of questions going on here. Um, see, Bryce P. Washington was having the same conversation with the next cop uh, YouTuber. Okay. Richard G., that's crazy. He didn't even really give him a chance before shooting him. Richard, but at what point? So let's talk about that for a second. At what point, when the door is open, let's look at this. Door, let's see. I'll count, I'll count seconds. One, two, three, four. Four, four seconds. For, let's, let's look at this. Is, this is bright light conditions and constraints. This is, this is blessed, right? Let's look at this, too. This cop is lucky. This is a, constra- a contrasting background. White floors, white walls, and a black gun. If it was dark carpeting, dark walls, would the cop's eye be able to pick that up as quickly? What if this was uh, dusk or nighttime? So you got low light conditions all of a sudden, and if the cop's got a flashlight. Now he's got two hands occupied. Um, this was a good shoot. How much time do you expect to give him? I actually, I, in the academy, we talked about people who are show up like this on scene, you know. And and I did. I I we had the the simunitions back then, but they were uh, different. Um, my scenario was traffic stop. Guy gets out of the car, puts a gun to his head. I lit him up, headshot, just pumped two three rounds into him, 
And it was a, it was the right thing to do because how long how how what's the time frame it takes me to go from this to that? Right to you. Me, I'm gonna kill myself, right to you. Nothing. Nothing. So no, the 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 officer it, sadly, sadly, the officer's execution of performance skills was phenomenal from a from a tactics point of view. It was an outstanding job. He assessed a threat within four seconds, drew his pistol, put five rounds down range. If you remove the other side of that coin, it was a great job. Gun on your property from uh, Bryce in Florida is 100% allowed. Um, move this over so I can see some of your, your comments here with you guys. Uh, it's crazy. He didn't really give a chance. I already looked at that one. Uh, Bryce also says, so here's my two cents. Did cop put the citizen in a mind frame so that a normal person would have been scared and had the same reaction? I agree. You get the whole sheriff's department open up. I'd be like, what the fuck is this dude? I agree. It's kind of, it, it's not, my, I would be uh, what's going on. I don't see anybody outside. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, Richard, uh, yeah, I guess I'll never answer the door with a gun with his cops. Don't answer the door. Don't answer the door. Uh, Corvette guy on PS3 at the Civil Rights Lawyer did a good breakdown of this, too. Curious your thoughts from uh, case law side. Uh, I'm not going to have any case law to wind up quoting um, for that. Uh, cake or cake, what about a barrier of some kind when doing these types of calls, riot shields or something, protection of both? Yeah, you know, you're looking at what, what's, what's the cost of that for department. And it would have been a lot cheaper than this man's life for what the city's going to be paying out. A couple of different things that could have been done better. He could have waited a little bit longer, right? He could have sat there and waited for his department to get a partner to get there. But the problem is, would that guy still have opened the door with a pistol in his hands? Ultimately, the, the discussion now has to become... What's the constitutionality of being in your residence with a gun in your hand while opening your door for anyone? And the police have to sit there and modify their, uh, cause you can't, how do you know who's the cops? How do you know? You can sit there and say, I'll prove you're the police. So I'm standing in my uniform. Okay. Oh, great. I just, so yeah, I, I have a hard time with this one. Um, I think the issue now is is far more uh, the the constitutionality of opening your uh, door to uh, with a fucking gun in your hand. That call sucked. That call sucked, man. I don't know. That's just real shitty on there. I I, I mean I my prayers go to the family, but also to the the police officer there who uh, had to put his it was put in that circumstance. He's put in that circumstance and wind up having to fucking make a life, life-changing life decision in four seconds. And then the one thing, too, is after you shoot somebody, which I've never done, thank God, uh, you got to live with that. you got to live with that. So my prayers go out to that officer and that and that the, the, the subject's family. I don't think he's a victim. He's a subject that was dealt with lawfully. Uh, the, it was just the tactics were... Let me put it this way. I wish the guy who opened the door was a bad guy because shit... You'd be celebrating those tactics. It's just a shit circumstance. I don't know the aftermath of it. I don't know the the, the hindsight 2020 aspect of it. Uh, moving on, I did a short yesterday with uh, commenting on Chili De Castro. Uh, Chili De Castro is a First Amendment auditor. He's a constitutional scholar, and I did a podcast with not knowing who he was. I did a podcast with him in twenty twenty one. Yeah, 2021, where, you know, he asked me uh, like an hour and a half worth of Q&A on law enforcement shit. Um, seemed to be intelligent. I've seen his garage from the videos he's done. He's got every single state statute, federal statute, you name it, plastered all over. His, I think he's fucking nuts. I think he's Mel Gibson conspiracy theory. I think he had potential. I really think he had potential to convey knowledge in a good way. I think he's a piece of shit human being. He, if you talk to him, 
you're not right. Only he's right. He's always right, right? He's so close-minded, doesn't want to hear shit. It's always his way. I'm like that to a degree, but I'm also open to hearing where the fuck I'm wrong on stuff, especially if I'm going to continue because I don't want to make an ass of myself, right? Apparently, he was arrested last year, uh, and it went to court, and he's serving a six-month sentence, and people are all pissed off because the, uh, he, I don't know, he, he mouthed off in court or something. And to my knowledge, because I've said this a lot, the attitude and verbiage of someone on scene dealing with a police officer is not enforceable, right? You got a shitty attitude, fucking can't arrest him. You can't arrest him. You got shitty language. Hey, officer, you're a piece of shit. Go fuck your mother. And Chili DeCastro is a piece of shit. And he talks like that. It's not, a, it's not against the law. What becomes an issue that cops can sit there and further their investigation on is behavior. Behavior. Chili DeCastro's behavior is erratic. And it's very intrusive when it comes down to... And a lot of people like say, he's not obstructing. Bullshit. Bullshit. If he wants to tow the fucking line while cops are doing their jobs and he's yelling and screaming and making a spectacle, they're not able to concentrate and they're dealing with the crowd. Yes, he is by definition impeding and instructing their investigation. Oh, but he's taken so many cops to court and won lawsuits. They've shut him up. They've appeased him. Personally speaking, I wouldn't mind somebody off duty socking him right in the fucking mouth. That's just me. I'm not a cop. I could say that kind of shit. And, uh, oh, he'll probably sue me for it. I, again, he had potential. I don't like his crybaby bullshit in court. Be a fucking man. If you are going to sit there and, and, and boast about how you sue cops and pigs on a daily basis, and that's how you make your living, when you are dealt with the consequences of what the court does... And last time I checked, court can issue sentencing based on how they think that they will change and correct the behavior of a citizen. That's their responsibility. They, not the police, the courts do. Then be a fucking man and don't cry in court like you did. But um, thanks to Mark Baggett, I want to see what this is. With uh, Chili DeCastro, this is apparently what got him arrested and put him uh, crying in court. Hey everyone, it's Mark, and today we're taking a look at a self-proclaimed constitutional law scholar known as Chile De Castro, who is also known as Delete Laws, and he ends up getting arrested. Let's roll the video. You good? Why, why'd they say uh, that you uh, were pulled over? Before he released. Oh, I see. Like, what a Oh, I see. Oh, gotcha. I'm going to do this one play by play, period. Number one, so I, I it used to be years ago um, when cell phones really came out. Uh, I, I used to sit there and talk about uh, before it really became popular. People used to have uh, those faux cell phones that actually had like three inch knives they popped out of or 22 caliber pistols. I don't give a shit. If I see you walk up on scene and you have a phone, I'm filming. Fuck you, it's for my safety. Back the fuck up. End of story. The problem I have with cops who deal with First Amendment auditors is you guys engage with them. Do your job quickly, decisively. Don't fucking talk to them. Just like they won't talk to you, don't talk to them. If they are obstructing, put them in cuffs. Secure them in the back of your squad car. Write in your report that it was for officer safety. Anybody who knows Chili DeCastro can say, Mr. DeCastro comes up on scene. He has a past uh, a history of acting erratic, uh, distracting officers from doing their job. You can easily articulate that he is distracting you from your fucking job. Put him in the back of a car. You're securing him from the scene. He's in the back of a squad car. He is safe. He's protected. Your dash cam is going to be recording the entire thing. Dash cams now, or squad car cameras now should also have the rear view uh, 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 detainee camera, audio, and video recording. Perfect. It's perfect for Mr. Chili De Castro or any other First Amendment auditors. Stop playing their fucking game. But learn your job. Learn the Fourth Amendment. 
learn First Amendment, Second Amendment, learn those bare minimum inside and out. Let's continue. You good? Okay. A lot of times when people come up for this, my first thing, and I don't know, Chili is an opportunist. He's going to see a, a, a cop stop by a car. If we look back on this too, I want to look at um, I look at the lights where the squad car lights going off. Uh, I don't see any red and blues flashing. And there's no front lights flashing. So I think that in a parking lot, which again, I don't know what the stop is. No idea. This could be a, a meet and greet. It could be a uh, it could be a traffic stop. It, parking lots are typically private property. So unless it's DUI, it's, nothing's going to happen. Um, it could have been that the business called in and said, hey, there's a suspicious vehicle out there. Would you check it out? There could have been, it could have, a person could have needed a cable jump, whatever it is. There are many, 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 many lawful reasons that the cop could be in contact with the person. The person walking up, walking up, again, now you're dividing. If you're walking up, it's officer safety. It's it, paramount. It's an officer safety issue that we're looking at. And I want to I want to check out um, what Chili does. If you if, if the person's gonna walk up, man, I'm gonna be like, sir, hands out of your pockets. Stay there, back up, because you're you're dividing my focus for my investigation and my stop. You good? Why, why'd they say uh, that you uh, were pulled over? Before he released. Oh, I see. Like, what a tear. Oh, I see. Oh, gotcha. You can film, but you need to stay away from my driver. Back up. Back up, or I'm going to detain you. You're going to detain me how? In which way? Get away from my car. Actually, I'm standing right here. I'm at least 10 feet away, officer. I got to tell you, I'm a constitutional law scholar. You Done. I, I mean, right there, done. He is obstructing. The stop, I don't know what the details of the stop was. I don't know if the person is free to leave. I have no idea what the circumstances are. 100%, if he's, a, see right there, this is where if he had knowledge of Chili and who he was, you take him right in the cuffs, right? But we know Chili's going to be a pussy and back off. So if you look at this, again, when the cop comes up. Back up or I'm going to detain you. You're going to detain me how? In which way? Back up or I'm going to detain you. You're obstructing. Lawful order is given. The problem is stop engaging with these First Amendment auditors afterwards. If you're going to do something, do it. Three, there's a three-code formula. Ask, tell, make. Back up. I'm going to detain you. He went right to tell, which he should. It's an officer safety issue. I don't know who this gentleman is coming up to me to the car while I'm interacting with another citizen here. There are some crazy fucking cop haters out there. I don't know if this guy's going to walk up, start sewing needles, stabbing me in the gut with a knife, pull a gun out or, or, or shoot me. I don't know. And I'm going to act better safe than sorry. Back up. I'm 10 feet from you. Do you know how, you know how fast it is? It's, it's a nanosecond to close the distance from point A to point B with a 10 foot. Fucking back up or you're going in cuffs. No, end of story, you're going in cuffs. As far as I'm concerned, based on what I saw this earlier, the officer gave him way too many chances, but let's continue. Actually, I'm standing right here. I'm at least 10 feet away, officer. I gotta tell you, I'm a constitutional law scholar. You can do whatever you want, but just understand something. Your name will go on the lawsuit. Mind your own fucking business. See, right there, remember. Now remember, I said, lawfully speaking, language, Nothing illegal about what Chili said. Attitude, nothing illegal. Behavior, it's not normal behavior. And especially in a world, in a world where we want to talk about there's mental health all over the place and police have to go to de uh, uh, uh tactics and all this. Well, if we're going to label everybody a fucking mental health patient, this fucking nut job is a mental health patient. He's insane. Who does this? Somebody looking for a payday. Somebody looking for a payday. When he gets out of jail and he starts doing this again, if you see this video and you're a cop, shut your fucking mouth, do your job. Meaning, find a reason, a lawful reason, to place Mr. DeCastro into handcuffs and secure him for his safety and your safety during your investigation. Don't engage him. Don't say fucking words. Clearly, this man has behavioral issues. And he's looking for confrontation. Words 
is constitutionally protected. Attitude, constitutionally protected, both under the First Amendment. Behavior, that's your job to keep yourself, you're safe. And he's also responsible for this citizen in the car. So, no, Chili's behavior is erratic. It's suspect. Cops got reasonable suspicion to think maybe this guy's a little bit off his rocker middle of the day approaching me on a stop that I didn't even request it for. The driver doesn't know who he is. It's not normal. The investigation is on. Let's continue. Hey, Chili, you're being detained for disrupting an investigation. If you were really a constitutional law scholar, you would know that. Mind your own fucking business. Mind your own business. I'm a member of the press. Go get in your car and do your job, little doggy. Go feed her. Having a YouTube channel doesn't... So, again, a couple different things when we're on there. The fact that it, it, it seems like he took the bait, right? Little doggy, but again... It's not, it's not the language, it's the behavior. His behavior is erratic. I'll be like, sir, are you okay? Sir, are you, are you, do, you, do you need assistance? What's wrong, sir? You guys got to learn how to use your job, use the Constitution, use your state law, all in your favor. Sadly, this, this, he's going to bait everybody into lawsuits, and he's going to get paid if this is the case. Uh, let's keep going. From the press... Hell, anyone can create a YouTube channel. Okay, then detain me. So here's the problem. Here's the problem. I don't know. Now let's look at laws, constitutionality. Is this person free to leave? Now the cops got to divide his attention. And there's officer safety issues. And, and everything you have to play in worst case scenario, right? What if this person didn't like being stopped? Now all of a sudden the cops tactically at a disadvantage, giving the back, his back to, a, to an active shooter in the car. What if Chili De Castro was somebody sent to distract this cop? I'd be calling for backup. Keep your mouth shut. I would stay behind the driver, be looking at Chili, this and that. I would wait till my backup got there, and then absolutely we would take him into custody. Because if there's a there's a reason, there's a reason he showed up on scene and he wants their attention. He'll get their attention, but right now, the 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 I don't, the 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 reason I would detain him is he impede, he's impeding my investigation. He's obstructing. He's causing an officer safety issue. He can record all he wants. Go back, and I would have a set distance to tell him. Do you see that row back there? Step back to that row. No, I'm not. Fuck you. That's a, that's a lawful command. It's a lawful command. I'll wait till a partner gets there. Then then I'll take him into custody. Oh, she's free. free oh, you're gonna detain a journalist. 2015, Rodriguez. Ron Moore says, you skipped over the part where the officer uh, told him to step back and Chili did take two steps back. Okay. Step back, right? The officer should define, I need you to go back to that line over there. See that, see that light pole over there? That one. Oh, that's 30 feet away. I'm giving you a lawful order. You're in, you're, and, and you don't even have to go that far, right? You're obstructing my traffic stop. You're impeding my investigation. I'm not going to waste all that time. Sir, do me a favor. Last time I'm telling you, step back over there. You're going handcuffs. Right there. It's done decision. I can easily articulate that for my safety, based on this person's erratic behavior, based on, and you see him, his, his, he's just, he's confrontational. It's not what he says. It's the behavior behind how he's saying it. That's a concern. It's an officer safety concern. Normal people don't walk up and be like, hey, officer, you're just a fucking piece of shit. That's fine. They're like, yeah, I get it, man. I'll go fuck my mother. Talk to me later on. But his behavior absolutely will put me at high alert where I put him in the cuffs for officer safety. I said it a million times. I'll keep saying it. Ah, don't, don't, don't put your hands on me. Come over. Don't tonight. touch me. Don't put Come your over. fucking hands on me. Officer admitted in court, this is from Ron Moore, that he did not give Chili a specific distance to back up. Fine. Okay, again, he told him he was obstructing. At what point, and this is something back and forth, right? If, if Chili's going to keep interrupting and it's going to be talking over him, right? You know those arguments where I start talking, you start talking, we're talking over each other. At what point do, do I have to give you like a ready, set, go? Do I have to lay out all of my instructions? It's the same thing with like Miranda for people who say, hey, uh, the cop had to wind it. The cop has to read you your rights and blah, 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 before they cut. No, they don't. There's there's a time and place for all this stuff. Cust custody plus questioning you was Miranda, but he doesn't have to give him specifics on stuff. I am going to put my hands up. No, you're not. I'm going to make sure. Hey, guys, make sure you guys get my, get my people on the phone. Yeah, 
Oh, this is so you ended the stop, you dunce cap. Did you just did you just end the stop? So that's yes. a 2015 cap. Come over here to my car. No. Come over here. No. Need additional unit. Bring your supervisor, please. Bring your supervisor, please. Don't touch me. To the car. You don't get to put your hands on me. Don't grab me. Don't grab me. This, you're not get, No, first get your supervisor out here. A couple of different things. The cop is afraid to grab him. He just should. It's ask, tell, make. You should have 100% just put him into custody. End of story right there. So that's, this is where this is getting out of hand now is the cop is trying to almost plead him, reason with him, bargain with him. This is where you guys will get into trouble when it comes down to uh, dealing with uh, the First Amendment auditors. Chili, what you don't understand is the off. Skip ahead a little bit. You've already released the. You, you've already released her. This is 2015 Rodriguez versus United States. You're walk. I'll walk right in front of your car. Let's go. Sure, come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. No, no. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a constitutional law scholar. You can't take away my phone. Yeah, I can. You know, there. Like I said this before too. I don't know if that's a phone. And I'm sure shit not going to have you prove it to me that it's not a, a, a knife or a, a, a 22 caliber pistol. I have no idea what it is. So I, I'm sorry for those who are like, it's a phone, fucking prove it. Go online and look up 22 caliber pistol phones. They're out there. Those The, the, the spring-loaded three-inch knives are phones. I'm not taking a chance with that. Put your fucking phone down. down on I'm, the I'm now You're being detained. Please, you're being. The, you're, now you're going to put hands on me. No, no. Wh Come over here. Why are you grabbing? Why are you grabbing me? Come over here. Sure, sure, sure. Here, Come over here. Let the phone roll. I don't what, care about what, the phone. Why are you grabbing Turn me? Turn around. I'm Turn a member around. of the press. Turn around. I'm not doing anything. You're being detained. I'm not right doing Turn anything. Around. Get your phone. Stop. 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 I'm, I'm, you know, are your cameras on? Are your cameras on? Yeah, it's on. He's he's looking for a problem, and constitutionally wise, he has every right to look for a problem. Uh, apparently he paid the price for this one by getting a six month sentence in prison is what it is. And, uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but shit, I, if you're, if you're going to deal with these first amendment auditors, know what your job is, know what the law is, know what the constitution is, and then act, don't play their game, fall into their trap. The ones who are that they're getting you, that's fucking embarrassing. They have free speech, right? They have free expression, but the behavior that's what you need to look into. All right. I appreciate your time with this. We're going to be doing more live breakdowns. You guys got anything you want to put in the comment section to comment on, please do. Let me know what your opinions are, what you thought, what you missed. Again, I, yeah, I can't stand Chili. I think he had a lot of potential. I think he purposely is looking for a fucking payday. Constitutionally, can he do that? Yeah, it's capitalism, baby. He can. But uh, be a fucking man. Don't cry in court if this is how you look at stuff. And, um, yeah, you asked for it. Is what it is. Guys, I appreciate your time. Have a great damn day. Subscribe to the channel if you if you haven't already. Hit the like button. Comment below. Let me know what you want me to discuss. To any any videos out there you want me to review, put in the comment section and I will uh, review them with you live. Have a great damn day. Be safe out there, guys.